Every year, a quarter of a million people in Britain will get a cancer diagnosis. There are about 1.3 million people living today that have had cancer or have cancer now. Now, over the next 20 years, our treatment for cancer will get better. Because of that, people will live longer. So there will be more people that will be living with cancer than ever before. You always expect it to happen to somebody else, but uh, quite often it doesn't. It happens to you or your loved ones and even, sadly, your children. When Helen died in 2002, we started the trust straight away because actually it was something to focus on apart from anything else and it was something that, you know, it was important really to, um, you know, make sure other people don't go through this. In terms of uh, alternative treatments, there ain't none. For me, effectively, there's, uh, you can pray and that's about it. <laughs> Emma was Sue's best friend and her sister was Helen's best friend, so it was like there was a unit of four very close friends and sisters, and two of them have gone, which is horrendous. She got it before, like three years ago, and the doctor said it's gone, but it actually had never gone. And then when they realised she had it, it was sort of really strong, so it was really hard to cure. The chemotherapy was like making loads of things happen and her hair was start to fall out. So I decided to shave my hair and raise money for it. And I raised £6,000. Many people with cancer are cured with the standard treatments of surgery, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, hormone therapy, and more recently, the biological treatments. But it's no secret that many people are not. I asked for a frank assessment of where I stood. I never expected to get the answer that I, I was given. I was given six months. I was diagnosed with terminal melanoma. Chemotherapy would not affect my longevity with the exact words. And I would die of this. For the past 30 to 40 years, there's been a great desire to harness the body's own immune system and to target that very powerful system against the cancer cells. Who's the person that said, oh, I'm coming here, well, we saw them this week? Yeah. Um, Conventional cancer treatment will very often get people into what we call a remission, which is that no detectable cancer is left. Sometimes those remissions are translated into cure. At other times, we all know that, unfortunately, the cancer comes back at a later stage. The reason for that is that there are small numbers of cancer cells left at the end of treatment, which later manifest as secondary cancers. About 13 years ago, I had a mole on my back, which I had removed. I then had uh, a lump came up in my axillary armpit, diagnosed as melanoma, unfortunately. Subsequently, had the other armpit done, which was given the all clear. Um, and then a year later, I had a tumour in my frontal lobe somewhere. Cancer vaccines are probably going to have the ability to wipe out those tiny cancer cells, too small to be seen, but which are so important and such an important reason why cancer treatment often fails. I've known Gus for nearly 30 years followed his career with great interest. Uh, he's worked in an area that's not been front line for many years, cancer vaccines, an area where there's been great change and great promise, and he's persisted at it, and I've admired what he's done tremendously. I got interested in research because I be began to be suspicious that uh, viruses might cause several cancers, and therefore the immune response to the virus would determine whether, uh, how the, whether the cancer ever took off, of course. If he cleared the virus, then the cancer wouldn't form, and that subsequently proven to be very much the case with hepatitis B and uh, cervix cancer, both of which can be prevented by vaccinating against the virus. So the concept of then vaccinating against the tumour then, then got very, uh, great interest to me. The people that go to Gus have gone, well mostly I think, when all other treatments have failed. And therefore his real results are extra amazing because, you know, that's all the people have been able to fall back on. Gus's programme is unusual in that it's first-class research, but at the same time it offers tremendous hope to everybody that goes there. Vaccines have much less toxicity. In fact, they have no unpleasant side effects. Every couple of decades there's been waves of interest in new ways of stimulating the immune system to uh, fight cancer. 
and uh, we're now in a, another, another wave which we hope will continue and actually finally get there and this time our focus is on the one cell, dendritic cell, that has to be involved in order to uh, break the tolerance of the body's immune system so it realises that the cancer cell is not one of us but actually an enemy to, to be kicked out. I'm going to put them into flasks with some cytokines and grow some dendritic cells from them. Now, to cut a long story short, we found a pathway that actually had, was stimulated by uh, a drug that was uh, freely available out there. In fact, it was a cream. So this is the way the basic research is going. It's not for uh, complicated, expensive vaccines, but to try and learn what is out there that we can actually mimic the effect of vaccines uh, in, in the most practical manner. He's tremendously great with his patients. They love him and they love the setup. Very down to earth. He's always got time um, and we'll discuss elements of the treatment with me as if I know what, you know what he's talking about. So four months into my prognosis, I planted some runner beans in the garden and I never expected to taste or harvest them. I'm absolutely amazed to say that I am now enjoying the fourth harvest of my own runner beans and I can tell you there's nothing that tastes nicer than runner beans when you don't expect to, uh, when you don't expect to live to to be able to see them on the vine. I believe in the Cancer Vaccine Institute, but I believe in Gustav Gleish. That's the person I have to say that I completely believe in. I mean, the, the Cancer Vaccine Institute gives the money to Gus because they believe in him as well. But, you know, he is just an amazing man. There are increasing indications that that is going to be one of the most powerful future tools for the treatment of cancer. I've known Gus Goldblish for the past 25 or so years. He has always been a pioneer in this field. At a time when nobody took it seriously, because nobody took, thought it could possibly work, he was slaving away and saying that it was one day going to work. Everybody now feels that we are within a whisker of getting the first cancer vaccine, and Gus Goldblish is a leading international pioneer in this field. It is very important for this work to be funded. Vaccines are very much the Cinderella of cancer research. The public funding bodies put their money into other areas, drugs, genetics, understanding the causes of cancer. I think what Gus has done is really put cancer vaccines mainstream to try and work out how best to combine them with other treatments and improve not just the length of life but also the quality of life of cancer patients. And has ultimately saved my life, I guess, a number of times over. I'm still alive and I'm incredibly grateful for that. And this is to you, to you Professor Dalgleish, your very best.